welcome to our annual Christmas program. Our Sunday school is very small, and uh, uh, Amy thought uh, long and hard, how can we uh, still put on a Christmas program with just a few children? This is what uh, she came up with, and uh, we're looking forward to, to uh, reading you the Christmas story. And the uh, boys and girls will be acting it out here with silhouettes. So let's begin. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was light, and that light was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. There was a young girl in a village in Galilee named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. God sent the angel Gabriel to appear to her with a message. She was confused and disturbed. Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. You will name him Jesus. He, he will be very great and will become the son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. The power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. This is how Jesus, the Messiah, was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph woke up, 
He did just as the angel of the Lord commanded. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. All returned to their all their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all the people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by these sounds. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth from the manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in a manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem. Where do you need to have a deal? The sun is up, and the east, and we have come to worship. He used to be born in Bethlehem, and he was born to see what the prophet was. And you will get to him in the land of Judah, and not be among the little cities of Judah. For a little will come from the new school, and be the shepherds who have to be. Here, 
King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, well, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They then opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route. For God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. After the wise men were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Joseph, get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother. Stay there until I tell you to return, because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary, his mother, and they stayed there until Herod's death. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child to and his mother back to the land of Israel, because those who were trying to call the child are dead. So Joseph got up and returned to the land of Israel with Jesus and his mother. The family went and lived in a town called Nazareth. There the child grew up healthy and strong. He was filled with wisdom, and God's favor was on him. I wonder if you could all join us as the children sing away in the main. Oh, oh, we're all singing as we pray. Join us.
Well, there would be uh, Christmas without uh, seeing some kids dressed in uh, sheep costumes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, boys and girls, for, uh, for doing that and joining in with this. It's always good to remind us of the, the incarnation, that miracle of uh, Christ being born uh, in this world. Well, I wonder if we could just stand briefly and greet everybody around you by saying Merry Christmas. Yeah. Say hello to everybody around you. Close. Go back and tell me forward, backwards. Well, thanks again for coming out and uh, sharing this uh, this Christmas season with us in uh, in good fellowship. Well, the, today the children have acted out uh, with these silhouettes uh, the account of the birth of Christ, as recorded in Luke. I love how Luke opens his uh, account of the birth of Christ. I'll just read uh, the first few verses here. This is Luke speaking. Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. With this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things that you have been taught. I really appreciate that last phrase that uh, Luke writes there, so that you may know the certainty of the things that you have been taught. You know, there's uh, been many skeptics over the years that uh, Christ was even born. Uh, that, uh, that uh, thankfully, they've all been disproven. And, uh, you know, in just a, a few days, we're going to be changing the date and uh, writing 2022. And that's always a reminder that it's been 2000 years since our Lord was on this earth. The very calendar that we use uh, documents that Christ uh, lived and uh, came to this earth. And yet the world uh, continues to uh, dispute it. Praise God. Well, today I'd like to look at uh, the appearances of the heavenly messengers who visited the individuals in the account of Luke. Each time they delivered their message, they started with the phrase, what? Be not afraid. And I felt it was particularly applicable to talk about be not afraid. Uh, uh, going through the past couple of years that we have gone through, there's been uh, much to be concerned about, hasn't there? Uh, looking around, uh, even, even today, with our masks, we're uh, concerned, we're anxious about uh, the disease that's uh, been spreading, and even spreading uh, more today than it was previously. Uh, but um, 
the phrase be not afraid isn't exclusively in the New Testament uh, related to Jesus. We, we read of it several times in the Old Testament. And uh, uh, one account is in Isaiah. Isaiah 41.10 tells us, so do, do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And again, in Jeremiah 30, 10, we read, so do not be afraid, Jacob, my servant. Do not be dismayed, Israel, declares the Lord. I will surely save you out of a distant place, your descendants from the land of their exile. Jacob will again have peace and security, and no one will make him afraid. I am with you and will save you, declares the Lord. The word that is used in both of these verses um, is dismay. Not necessarily a word that we, we use too much nowadays, but um, in the original Hebrew, the word dismay can mean gazing with anxiety. It's interesting that these two things are paired together, fear and dismay, gazing with anxiety. Certainly, we've been filled with anxiety uh, uh, recently. And it's not just uh, COVID, the disease that's uh, spread, but it's uh, violence in our cities. It's uh, the rising cost of living. Maybe it's aging parents that we're responsible for it. And the difficulties that come with that are filling us with anxiety. But the lesson that we can learn from the few verses that I've read is what? That the Lord is with us. And a great example that I heard uh, this week uh, from a, a preacher on the radio is, um, Say you're at home and it's nighttime and uh, you hear a cry from another room. Uh, parents, you have a child uh, in their bedroom and they cry out, I'm scared. Do you just shout over to them? Hey, just be courageous. You'll be fine. Go back to sleep. <laughs> no, what do we get at? What do we do? We get up, we go to their room, we maybe hug them, we hold them tight and say, don't be scared, I'm here. And to me, the, the verses that we, we just read remind me that God is always here. It's interesting that Amy, uh, my Amy, just uh, remembered this week. <laughs> I think uh, maybe it came under the context of giving parental advice to someone that uh, <laughs> um, uh, many nights uh, Amy would uh, end up sleeping on a floor uh, next to a worried child. It's great to remember that God is always with us and that uh, we do not need to be afraid. He doesn't say, well, just be courageous. <laughs> he says, no, I am with you. Well, let's read the account of uh, the first account in Luke of uh, the angel appearing to Zechariah. Now, this wasn't covered under the boys and girls uh, presentation, but it was uh, the first appearance of an angel uh, predicting the birth of Christ. So in Luke, we read, once when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by Lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense, incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth 
will bear you a son and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and a delight to you and many will rejoice because of his birth for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. Well, an angel appearing to anybody spontaneously, I'm sure, would, uh, would make us fearful. Uh, but the angel uh, addressed that concern immediately, didn't, didn't he? He said, do not be afraid. Um, what a revelation that Zechariah's prayers were answered. Uh, no doubt he and his wife Elizabeth had been married for quite a while, because later in the verses we read that uh, he, um, uh, they were advanced in age, and they had been praying for a child. So maybe this was 40 or 50 years of praying for a child. Uh, I'm sure there are people here today that have been praying to the uh, God for an answer. Um, and you know, the lesson that I think we can, we can uh, learn from Zechariah and Elizabeth praying for a child is for us to be patient, to wait for that answer uh, for prayer. We read in scripture that God's time is not necessarily our time. You know, we have an example of uh, uh, waiting patiently for an answer to prayer. Remember the uh, Balanek family were here, um, were uh, longtime missionaries in India. The boys and girls were practically raised in India, and um, they were forced to come home during COVID, weren't they? They're were expecting to be home just a few months. And uh, what did that turn into? Nearly two years that they were away from where the Lord had led them to India. But we kept praying, didn't we? We prayed for those doors to be open. And I remember uh, Mike sharing here with us that uh, finally the approvals came for him to, to travel back. And then it was prayer that uh, they would be healthy and that uh, the tests would come back clear so that they could get on that plane and travel. Uh, one example of praying, expecting an answer, but being patient for that answer. And certainly uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth showed that patience over the years, but finally the Lord answered their prayers. Well, the next be not afraid is when the angel came to visit Mary. Let's read that account one more time. In the six months of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, to you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God and you will receive the gift. You will, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. And what's Mary's response? I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be fulfilled. 
and then the angel left her. Well, we find that the uh, angel at first greeted Mary, and at this, at this point uh, tells us Mary was afraid. The angel immediately responded with, do not be afraid. And the angel went on to tell Mary how this would take place and that the Holy Spirit would conceive this child. And then to reinforce that God was a God of miracles, the angel revealed to Mary that her cousin Elizabeth was going to have a baby. You know, the lesson I take from this account is that the Lord may have plans for our life that seem scary. Can you imagine a teenager being uh, revealed by an angel that she would be uh, the mother of the Son of God? Well, maybe he's called you to serve him in a way that seems outside, we use the term comfort zone. Um, <laughs> this is certainly outside of a com com comfort zone, isn't it? to actually bear a son. Um, and you may say, how can I do this? My thoughts are, if we confess our concerns to him uh, and look to him to answer our questions, we may just see proof that we are in his will and that he is with us in our endeavor. Well, an example of trusting our heavenly father is a story that uh, my daughter Beth shared with me. Um, he, she wrote it in a blog, and I may have shared this to some of you too, that uh, down at Camp Lilo Light, uh, some of you know, uh, I teach a, a, a high ropes course. And uh, throughout the summer, we take kids through um, some challenging things to, to see uh, you know, how they do and to kind of, conquered their fears. Well, my daughter Beth uh, decided to take the training that uh, would enable her to also be a leader in this and a helper in this. And um, we trained for a couple days down at camp. And one of the activities that we did was repelling. Uh, that's where you uh, support yourself from a rope and you come down from a high place Maybe you've seen uh, videos of Marines jumping out of helicopters <laughs> on a rope that's repelling, that's coming down a, from a tall uh, something suspended by a rope. Well, my Beth uh, was uh, tied up to repel down the uh, 46 foot tower that we have at camp. And this would be the first time that she's done this. And she's uh, harnessed up and she's connected. But at camp, we do it uh, a little differently. We have a safety line tied to them. Uh, it's uh, the term that we use at camp is a belay. And uh, the belay line is connected to a person that if anything, uh, goes wrong, if the person forgets how to, how to control their descent, they're coming down, uh, the safety line is there to catch them. And a person is, is holding that safety line. Well, um, my uh, Beth is up on the tower and I happen to be the belayer down on the ground. Well, it's interesting that we have worked so long on this, uh, uh, one particular training that the sun has gone down and it's dark and uh, Beth doesn't know who's holding the safety line because she can't see me, it's too dark. But before uh, the participant, the person starts to come down on the rope, we have a command and, it, and the question is on belay and it's just a short way of saying, Am I connected to the rope? <laughs> Am I connected to the safety? And the person on the ground says, belay on. And at that point, my daughter Beth heard my voice. 
And she, she felt reassured that who had her on the safety line? Her father. And proceeded to, to come down. She did very well, lowered herself to the ground. The, uh, me being the safety person didn't have to uh, uh, stop her from coming down because she was doing it herself. But uh, she shared afterwards in the, in the article that she wrote that she compared that to being connected to our Heavenly Father. And that um, the reassurance of knowing that her earthly father was uh, uh, there for her safety, ultimately, that her heavenly father. And uh, eventually, our Beth uh, uh, did something very scary. She went to be a teacher in uh, Africa for a number of months. And all that that entailed, the worry, the anxiousness that she had, she continued to trust her heavenly father. And just as Mary trusted God in the revelation that she would be the mother of the, of the son of God, um, because she knew that the father was ultimately in control. Well, the next um, Be Not Afraid that I'd like to share with you and we'll close with this, is when the uh, angels um, came to the shepherds in the fields. Uh, let me read that account. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Well, the one lesson that I take from this fear not, or one of the lessons is the angel um, spells out very clearly that a savior has been born. Now, the uh, long awaited Messiah that entered this world, and certainly for any Jew that knew the promises made in the Old Testament, they were looking for that Messiah, weren't they? And what a thrill it must have been to be the first to be told of this great news. The next thing that the uh, shepherds did is recorded. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. To me, this speaks that the shepherds took action. They took the message and then they hurried off to see for themselves uh, the good news. How often are we afraid of spreading that good news? While an angel didn't visit us and reveal the birth of uh, the Savior, it certainly has been revealed to us. If you're a born-again Christian, if you know this Savior, I trust that you are sharing that good news. I think that God is telling all of us, do not be afraid. Share this good news with others. We all have a, a great opportunity this time of year when the focus of uh, people around us is Christmas. We can remind them that the true meaning of Christmas was that Savior that was born um, and that uh, the Savior was born for a reason. And that was to, uh, to live a sinless life, to ultimately die on the cross not for his own sins, 
but for our sins and uh, that faith in him is what is needed. Well, thank you very much once again for coming out. I think we're going to close in one more hymn. We'll have Brian come up and lead that, but I'll just close in prayer first. Father, again, we thank you for the incarnation. Lord, you did not spare your son, but you sent him to this world. And Lord, we know that uh, you came and we truly believe in uh, the salvation that you have offered us. And we thank you for it. And we thank you for each that has come today. And we pray that you continue to watch and bless us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. In closing, let's stand and sing number 270, Joy to the World. The Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing. Christmas, everybody, and you are dismissed.